Hi, it's Kim. Today I'm working with the new Vicky Booten Fernwood range, scrapping these photographs of my son out on a photography excursion to an abandoned house near our local cemetery. I'm using this beautiful chevron paper as the background and I am retaining the salvage strip at the top, which is a beautiful phrase that says, begin anywhere, capture the moments, bring your own sunshine, stay curious, create, find beauty everywhere. Such wonderful things surround you every day. So it's really cute. So I'm keeping that on. So I trim the page to 12 by 12 from the other end. Now I'm adding a strip, which is from, and some tags, and they're both from one of the pattern papers in the range, uh, the Fernwood Tags, I think it's called, um, which is a great cut apart sheet with different 12 by 12 strips and lots of different tags. So with one of the tags, this green one, I am just cutting off the journaling panel from it because you're only going to see the tops of the tags in this cluster at the top right hand of the page. So I'm going to use that little journaling panel as part of that cluster and then I'm keeping the moth and I'm going to fussy cut that to also add to that cluster. So the tags, just the tops of the tags go into that cluster um, I love the colours in this paper. Um, my previous video is also using the Fernwood range. Both of these layouts are for my local scrapbooking store, Embellish It, in Timaru, New Zealand. But the last layout was very much florals and pinks from the range. And then this layout is very much the blues and the greens. And the last layout used butterflies. And this layout's using moths. And the moths and the butterflies that I have fussy cut come from another pattern paper that has lots of moths and butterflies to cut out. Um, so I've stuck down that strip now across the tags and then I will add to that cluster as I progress with the layout. So what I'm, I've also added another one of those strips at the bottom, which is a, a just a brown strip, which looks like different pieces of pattern paper. And on those strips, there is some stitching as well. So I'm going to enhance that by using some stamps that I have with uh, stitching designs. There's lots of different companies that produce a stitching stamps. So I'm using those and adding some stitching to the bottom right strip, the top right cluster that I'm forming and then I'm going to add in a minute another bunch of thread to the left of where the photos are going to sit. Now I'm using off cuts that were left from papers that I used also for the other layout that I did. So this black and white paper is the reverse of the tickets paper. So I am going to also use some of the tickets on this layout but the way that the off cut worked is that I had black on one side but because it's striped I had white on the other side of the photo and I didn't like that so I cut another piece of the off cut and I added it to the right going the other way so that it looks more black that's why it looks like that but when you cover it up cover it up with the photo you can't tell and this is a great way to use off cuts of pattern paper rather than cutting into another full sheet so you can see there that I added that I'm adding some, I'm just trialing which stamp that I want to use for the sewing. And then I'm going to add a sewing stitch stamp down what will be down the left side of that photo. So the photo I mounted on craft foam, which is adhesive on one side and you can easily cut to the size that you want. And then I mounted it on that distressed background paper as I mentioned just scraps that I had left from yes from the layout that I did in the previous video now these are some more tags that I fussy cut from that tag paper I'm just punching the holes I'm not actually going to end up adding anything to the holes because the layout is quite busy anyway but I punch the holes so that they look like proper tags and I'm going to cluster those tags and then I'm going to add some tickets to this cluster and I'm just grabbing the tickets now, trialing what I want to use, and I will end up distressing all the edges of those tickets. Now I am adding also a cluster of chipboard shapes to the top of the photo. So since my son is taking pictures of this abandoned house, there were some very cute little chipboard houses in the Fernwood chipboard sheets. So I've used those. 
And then I've used a little um, tag which goes at the top of something. I don't know what you label, tag. And it says, love this. And it's in the same greens and blues. So I've added that to that cluster. And another chipboard sticker that says noted, which I've also added up there. And I think that's perfect at the top of the photo. So you can see that I'm, I'm fiddling with some of the various tickets that I've got. Again, I've picked ones that are in very much in this um, blues and greens. There is touches of yellow on this paper. So one of the tickets has brought in some more of that yellow because of course the house at the top of the photos also has some yellow and there's some touches of yellow in the top cluster. So by having the three lots of yellow, it does help move your eye around the layout. So that yellow, uh, the title of this layout is Change Your Perspective perspective being a pun on the photography element since you know photography is all about perspective and I am just fussy cutting out that moth from the ticket and that's going to go in the top cluster I've already fussy cut so you can see just above the title there's a moth sitting there that was fussy cut from the butterfly moth paper and I did that before I started as part of my preparation for this layout so just fussy cutting that moth now as I said it's going to go up the top and fussy cutting on videos is very boring for you and I do try to speed it up as fast as I can in the editing process but I know some people like to see these and if you don't please of course feel free to fast forward and then there's a little chipboard word and that's nearly finishing off that top cluster now so in that top cluster there's two tags um, there's a little, uh, there's going to be a little, the little label journaling part that I cut off the tag, which hasn't been added up there yet. The moth, the stitching, chipboard stickers, and eventually I will add some leaves up there as well. So you can see I've just added that little journaling tag up there. And I'm fiddling around having a look at some chipboard stickers, but I've come to the stamps and I think I'm going to use some stamps. So I hunt through all my scraps to see what I've got in the way of green. And while doing that, I found another blue ticket. So I added that into my cluster, which I haven't stuck down yet. Um, and then I also layered another blue ticket across the front to hide the sneakers because I didn't like the sneakers that were on the front tag but I wanted to use that tag for journaling so I laid the blue tag there and then laid the camera on top of it so the tag and the camera hid the sneakers perfect so in my scraps of paper I found these green tone tickets and I am going to use the leaves from the flower and leaves stamp set to stamp some leaves in black ink because all of the die cut pieces are edged in black. So I'm using black uh, archival ink to stamp onto these green colored tickets with the different leaf shapes from that stamp set. And, and so the stamp set also belongs in this range this collection and then I'm going to fussy cut out those leaves and I will use them as embellishments on this layout so there won't be any flowers it'll just be clusters of leaves there's lots of trees in the photos around this abandoned house I think it works um, also matches in beautifully with the colors that are in this gorgeous background paper that I'm using so I fussy cut all of those and I cut most I cut most of that video out because I don't think you need to see me fussy cutting a whole heap of leaves and I'm going to put them in three places. So the um, two different spots on the cluster next to the photo and then in the top cluster, top right hand corner cluster, I start by putting them to the left of that little journaling tag, but I end up moving them to the right of it. I think that balances it out quite well because there's a green tag on the left and then the leaves on the right and before I stick those leaves down I just shape them a bit like by squeezing them together just to give them a little bit more dimension and then I'll just use wet glue to stick them down and I think I am now at a stage where I want to start sticking various elements down nope I am going to add some stamping so if you saw my last video you will have seen that I did some stamping with um, tops random tops off bottles in different sizes and I'm going to use the same thing here but I'm using paint this time instead of um, oxide inks and I am using I did trial that 
cap, which is off a Powerade bottle, but decided it was too big. And so I have gone back again to the the lid off a spray bottle, um, this an ink spray bottle, and uh, the lid off a pen. And I am using gesso this time. So I did add a tiny bit of water to it, and it is a heavy gesso. And I am using that to stamp white elements onto this background. So I'm putting a cluster near the houses at the top of the photo, a cluster off to the right of the elements next to the photo, and then some near the cluster in the top right hand corner. So you can see that I'm doing those up there. Uh, the gesso works really well because it's a heavy gesso, it's quite thick. Uh, I then did think I was going to add my splotches then, but realised that I am better to wait to do that until I finish the layout and then I can do it at the end, cover up the elements that I don't want splattered and then I can set it aside to dry because sometimes those splatters can take quite some time to dry because they're quite thick. So now I'm just gluing down all the various elements. So I've stuck down the moth and now I'm gluing down the leaves and getting them into the right position. As I said, I just give them a bit of a squeeze before I glue them down with wet glue, making sure that my houses are straight. So I know where they're going to be. So I'm just straightening them up there and I will actually add some wet glue to those because I've been picking them up, putting them down, picking them up, putting them down. I will put wet glue on them. Then the photo down. Um, and now instead of lifting everything and trying to glue it all down separately, I'm just easing pieces up putting some wet glue in and sticking them back down because I've got everything exactly where I want it and I don't want to move things because it's always hard to put them back. They never seem to go back exactly how you had them when you initially put the layout together. So I've put some craft foam under that blue ticket um, that's going horizontally and I'm also putting some craft foam under the camera because the top of the camera is sitting off the ticket below. I'm putting two layers of the foam at the top of the camera so that it sits nice and firmly and flat. It's slightly overlapping the photo. This just helps join all the elements together in that cluster. So the leaves are going in at the top of that last blue ticket and around sort of moving around or, or curving around to the bottom of that yellow ticket and then the title will sit there so the leaves will be um, underneath that title and the title says as I said change your perspective and the little tab under it is today is going to be a good gonna be a good day and that's a chipboard sticker and the moth so I've just put a little bit of craft foam under its leaves so they stay up and it's stuck on top of that cluster and now I'm just adding some little gold chipboard stickers to the uh, gesso circles. I did something similar on the previous layout as well with some gorgeous chipboard multicolored like pie, pie chart um, stickers and they were very cute. These ones are gold um, and they work really well with this layout so I have stuck them around the layout and now I am just using some... It is some of the, oh, I'm just grabbing it out of my, uh, maybe, and now I have made a mess, but trying to find this so that I make sure I give you the right thing. It is Dina Wakely uh, Gloss Spray, and it's a glossy acrylic spray in white, and I find it lasts really well. Then I've added my journaling, and the layout is done. Here's some close-ups so you can see the details of the stamping and the elements that I've added. Thank you so much for joining me. This layout was for Embellish It, my local scrapbook shop. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press like. Uh, and if you enjoy my videos, I would love if you subscribe so you can join me again um, for my next video, which won't be too far off. Thank you. Bye.